Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing this all new updated 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. And huge thanks to Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Tampa for making this review possible. These guys have an impressive dealership, I'll leave links to their inventory below and if you're in the market for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Grand Cherokee has been Jeep's midsize SUV since 1993. That's when the first generation was released. The fifth generation that you see here is all new for 2022, at least for the two-row variant that we have here. The three-row Grand Cherokee L that we've already reviewed a few times in this channel was released last year. Technically, the Grand Cherokee L is still part of the fifth generation platform, but I consider that more to be a first generation since we have never before had a three-row Jeep until the Grand Cherokee L and now the Wagoneer. But here we have the Grand Cherokee two row limited starting around 44,500. What do we get for that money? Let's see what we get. So up front, you notice your orange daytime running light sitting right above your LED headlight for the high and low beam LED fog light right beneath too. Full front parking sensing, solid airflow for this radiator for the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. In this application, producing a very healthy 293 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this 4,500 pound SUV to 60. In the lower mid seven second range, you notice your forward-facing camera right below your Jeep badge, signature seven-piece Jeep grille as well. We mentioned the front parking sensing with the radar cruise control housed in the lower part. I'm liking the front end styling. I feel like from this angle, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but once you start looking at the headlights and up, you can clearly see the updates in this fifth generation Grand Cherokee. The side profile looks very updated, especially in the rear end of the side profile. The wheel and tire setup, since we just have a limited trim, relatively basic, but they still look very clean. I'm liking the Y spokes. These are 18 inch rims wrapped in Michelin. Primacy LTX all season tires. Dimensions being a very solid 265-60 R18. So not only are they pretty wide with the 265s, the 60 series sidewall should really help when it comes to ride quality. Solid ground clearance too. You can get up to, I think, 11.3 inches with the Trailhawk trim level. Plastic cladding surrounding the wheel well, so you don't have to worry about getting rock chips. Side sensor for the front parking sensing. This vehicle gets the 360 camera. So really, again, like I said, really a loaded vehicle. Grand Cherokee with the American flag right next to it. LED turn signals on the mirror. We get additional camera on the blind spot blacked out mirror it's a nice contrast the mirror fills up the entire frame blind spot monitoring and it's a heated glass black trim for the lower part of the window trim but we get some shiny chrome right up top body color roof rails which is a nice touch smart access for all four passengers the rear wheel and tire setup same thing as the front the only difference is a smaller brake caliper we get the 265 60 r18 michelin primacy all seasons plastic cladding for the side skirt rocker panel area also should help off-road situations the gas cap is a push to open we get easy fill and this suv does accept 87 which is pretty nice for situations like right now with the gas prices out rear full rear parking sensing nice daytime runner on the tail light turn signals and the reverse lights uh the tow hitch is covered with plastic i'll leave a link right here to show you what this suv is rated to tow jeep in between the two daytime runners for the tail lights third brake light on the spoiler i kind of wish that the rear wiper was integrated with the spoiler but it still looks relatively clean limited badge in the right corner but other than that we can take a squat right back here start this 3.6 liter v6 up and hear how she sounds All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 sold by Jeep for the all new fifth generation Grand Cherokee. And as soon as you figure out the slatch, we can pop it up. Huge thumbs up for the struts, makes everything a lot more convenient. No engine cover either. And this V6 can make up to 293 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. Batteries on the passenger side, which is good for weight balance. And what you see is basically what we get. This SUV is also available with an optional 5.7 liter V8. But this V6 is still enough to get this vehicle to 60 in the lower mid 7 second range. I'm pretty sure car and driver tested it at 7.4, which is very respectable with this Torque Flight 8-speed automatic transmission. But other than that, that's about it for the exterior, guys. We can take a look at the window sticker real quick before hopping out inside. Of course, we get the 2022 Grand Cherokee Limited 4x2. We don't get 4x4, unfortunately. Base price, 44645 Exterior color is Baltic gray metallic with a clear coat exterior paint. Absolutely gorgeous. Really shines in this Florida 
Sun mechanically with a 3.6 liter V6, Capri leather seats with perforated inserts, 8 speed automatic, 850 RE transmission. Standard features, you can pause, take a look at all of these on your $44,645 base price for the limited 4x2 Grand Cherokee. $395 for this Baltic Gray Clear Coat Metallic, $700 for the customer preferred package, which includes the $695 trailer tow prep group, including a trailer hitch, zoom, automatic headlamp leveling system, rear load leveling suspension, full-size spare tire, $2,300 for the luxury tech group 2, which includes the Capri leather seats with perforated inserts, intersection collision assist system, front and rear park assist with stop, surround view camera, rain sensitive windshield wipers, rear view auto dimming digital display mirror, rear view backup camera washer, wireless charger, ventilated front seats, off-road camera, manual second row sunshades, automatic dimming exterior driver mirror door and liftgate passive entry memory steering column power tilt and telescoping steering so that luxury tech group 2 is an absolutely fantastic feature for around 2300 bucks 1100 gets us the uconnect 5 with a 10.1 inch touchscreen display which includes gps navigation nine amplified speakers with a subwoofer and a 506 watt amplifier after an $1,800 destination charge, total vehicle price is sitting a tick under $51,000. 22 combined MPGs, 19 city, 26 highway. As far as the interior, that's where this car really shines. Up top, all soft touch, wood grain trim beneath, aluminum beneath that. Solid weight resistance too for the aluminum door handle, two-person memory seats, auto one touch for the front two passengers, still power windows out rear. And check this out, we get dual panes up front on a limited trim so very nice feature power folding mirrors four-way adjustable too nice contrast stitching the bottom area is all hard plastic 506 watt alpine premium audio system you could easily fit a foot long down here probably 20 ounce water bottle too but make sure the lid is tightly closed because it is sideways also you can probably get some secret stuff right in front of it some snacks or some car accessories the seats are really comfortable perforated leather for the center contrast stitching Fully adjustable four-way lumbar recline, drop, lift, and slide. As far as the interior in general, we can take a step inside and really check it out. And the first thing I noticed is the steering wheel completely updated for the new Grand Cherokee. We get these really nice 10 and 2 bolstering notches, contrast stitching, the 9 and 3. It's nice in your hand, but the wheel doesn't really cut out enough for your fingertips. So I personally probably prefer just driving with like a 10 and 2. The spokes beneath are outlined in this wood trim, more of that aluminum. The Jeep area is rubberized for the horn, the horn itself. Pretty aggressive sounding horn, people should definitely be getting out of your way and left the steering wheel, this adjusts your infotainment, which is a 12.3 inch full digital instrument cluster. Right side adjusts our radar cruise control and cruise control settings in general. Paddle shifters control this eight speed automatic transmission and behind or underneath the shifters, we get some of the media controls. The turn signal stocks have a satisfying click, rain, sen rain sensing wipers, automatic headlamps, all that. The dashboard, nice stitched, soft touch material. To the left of the steering wheel, more of that wood trim with aluminum beneath that. Some hard plastic right above your lighting controls, auto headlamps, interior lighting, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Also a huge thumbs up for a limited trim. Electronic parking brake, pretty nice size dead pedal. And you can get a good look at your non-aluminum outlined pedals right out there. 12.3 inch display as we mentioned is con configurable with these dials we're currently looking at now fuel economy you can check out your gauge summaries which includes coolant temp trans temp oil temp oil pressure battery voltage oil life tire pressure stop start fuel economy which is right where we were when we began trip a trip b uh, audio slash media messages screen setup and you can also adjust between an analog digital setup or you can press and hold ok and now we're looking at a fully digital speedometer. So pretty configurable, guys. My personal favorite is just to leave it in the old school analog digital gauges. But you can let me know in the comment section what you guys personally prefer. The 10.1 inch touchscreen is all new, fully updated, unbelievable response and resolution. Check this out. As soon as the map loads up, this is a brand new car, so just let it load up real quick. Be patient. The response of the screen is absolutely excellent. It responds to your touch perfectly. The resolution is some of the best in the business. This is an all-new 2022 vehicle, and you can really tell with this infotainment. Home, you can go home, add your widgets. I'm not going to add anything. Let the owner of this vehicle do anything he would like. Media, comfort. You can control your comfort and like air quality and all that through your infotainment. We also get hard buttons beneath. Heated and ventilated seats, vent controls, dual zone auto climate, of course. Phone, vehicle settings, you can check out what's adjustable, mirror dimmer, surround camera, forward facing camera, and rear view camera are all accessible at all times. Apps, we get 
Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, of course, Alexa device manager. Uh, but as far as those cameras, let's start off by throwing this thing into reverse. And the camera is unbelievable when it comes to resolution. Excellent for the backup camera, guidance lines, trajectory, and you get a little center marker so you can line it up to a trailer hitch with no issues at all. The 360 camera is also fantastic. It's showing you my water bottle in the lower corner. That's how good of a resolution that thing has. You can also do a wide view for the backup, front view, and a narrow front view, which allows you to keep your 360 and as well as a overhead trailer view camera. Overhead front view too with guidance lines, which would really help you off road with those trajectory and tire marks for the front. But other than that, the camera system in this SUV is truly incredible. Throw it back into park, it immediately returns back to the home screen. Up top, engine start stop, which you can turn off for the purpose of this review, we will. Lane keeping assist, you can also turn off. I guess we'll keep it off for the purpose of this review. Traction control, we'll leave it on. Hazards, parking sensors, also we'll leave on. Sport, we'll start the review off in normal mode, transition into sport, and just see what the differences are. Nice leather stitch trim right outside for the dashboard that would continues engine start stop to the left. Beneath, we mentioned all the we mentioned all the media controls. We can also shut this little cubby underneath the cubby. Well, not media, the climate control. Sorry, guys. Underneath the cubby, it exposes a wireless charging pad, two USB and two USB ports, USB-C ports, aux port, and a 12 volt, which you can access. Pretty easily, good spot for a radio detector, and it's all outlined in felt. Very premium feeling interior. A little bit of piano black for the center area, but they didn't really overdo it with it, in my opinion. You got these dumbbell hexagonal stop sign shaped cup holders. You can fit your stop sign shaped cups with some puffy things to keep them in place. Nice spot for keys too. Super soft and gushy armrest. Huge thumbs up. Very comfortable. Two tier storage. First tier is outlined in felt. You could probably fit at least six iPhones in there. Bunch of car accessories, business cards, pens. You can open up the second tier, which is massive. You're fitting at least two, maybe three two liter bottles of soda in there with no issues. Very nice, solid space for this mid-size SUV. The glove box, we can open it up. It is not lined with felt, but it's very well damped, pretty large. I'd expect you to fit around 20, maybe 25 license plates. You're probably not going to fit a second pair of shoes, but you should be able to fit at least one. The backup camera, oh, not the backup, what am I saying? The rear view mirror, I'm sorry, guys, is frameless and auto dimming. It also has a camera function, so you can use a camera for the rear view, which I personally really like. We're currently just looking at trees because we have nothing but woods back there, but in like traffic situations, it is very useful, especially if you're towing a trailer. Uh, but other than that, it's adjustable with these buttons, garage home link on your visor, LED lighting for the interior, sunglass holders, SOS and assist to left the steering wheel if we didn't mention auto headlamps and your interior lighting, but I'm pretty sure we did mention that. That's about it though for features and the interior for the front seat in general. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. All right guys, step in the back seat of the two row 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Let's check it out. So up top, soft touch, wood beneath, aluminum beneath that, the resistance for the grab handle. Very nice two speakers on your door panel. Soft, gushy, soft armrest for the rear passengers. Power windows, no auto on touch, but not really a big deal. The storage is decent. You can probably fit a 16 ounce over here, maybe a six inch sub right next to it. The rear seats are still that beautiful perforated leather. They're not ventilated out rear. We'll see if they are heated and you can recline the seat with that little latch. Legroom, I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have plenty, plenty of space. As you mentioned, these seats do recline. We'll do exactly that. And wow, they recline very far. Check this out. So very comfortable position back here. I kind of feel like the king of the road, at least like six, seven inches of overall knee space, plenty of space for my feet. Cargo nets behind both of the front passengers. We get vents, solid storage, two USB ports and USB-C ports, AC adapter, and both of the seats back here are heated. But other than that, the interior lighting is located right here. You simply click and we get an LED zone light. No moonroof, it would be nice to get one for this SUV. It would be also nice to get standard all wheel drive. Outside of that, really no complaints with this limited trim. It actually surprised me with how many features we actually get for an SUV that starts well under $50,000 below before destination. Other than that though, the headroom, I have plenty of space, at least like six, seven inches of headroom. If you're under like six foot seven, you shouldn't have any issues back here at all. The center cubby has a string, you pull it out, and it's very soft, gushy leather, stop sign shape, cups with the pushy things to keep them in place. Other than that though, that's about it for the back seat. Let's hop out back, check out the trunk real quick, and then take this 2022 updated Grand Cherokee two-row out for a drive. So underneath the Jeep, there is a button. 
auto opening tailgate and as soon as it opens up we can see very large when it comes to cargo space wow i was not expecting it to be this large you fold those rear seats down which fold down 60 40 split i'd expect you to fit at least a 75 80 inch tv back here this is a large trunk and i could definitely see why they chose to make the l version with the three rows you get a cubby in the left corner you can put some dog treats or dog toys in there don't have to worry about them sliding all around your trunk a little bit of secret storage beneath here too which houses your full-size spare tire throw some secret stuff right outside of it cargo hooks in the right corner we get a subwoofer for this 506 watt alpine sound system and it does take up a little bit of cargo space or at least it does appear so but when you compare it to the other side with that same hump really not a big deal and jeep thought it through perfect location for a trunk closing button so you don't have to worry about reaching too high up if you have a hands full with groceries you simply press this button take a step back it gives you a second so you don't have to worry about getting crushed in the head with the tailgate but as soon as it closes up We'll take one more quick little walk around this all new updated 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee two row limited four x two. Beautiful paint color. I really like that gray metallic. I'm excited to take this car for a drive too. see any updates. You really notice the updates in the rear end and the side profile. The front end is also updated. The entire SUV is updated, but the front end, as you see with that grill design, it really keeps that Jeep Grand Cherokee heritage to its name. But other than that, let's take this car out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all-new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee updated limited 4x2. Let's take it out for a drive. And I'm also kind of liking this gear selector. I would prefer a true gear selector, but I'm kind of used to my dad's Ram 1500 by now, which has a similar dial. So I'm not going to knock it. My first impression, though, this steering feels very nice and on center. I actually wasn't expecting it to feel quite as good as it does. Uh, this is the same company that built the Wrangler for the last 20 years, which has had some of the worst steering in the last couple decades. But the new Wranglers also have pretty solid steering, in my opinion. So Jeep's really starting to pick it up, get updated with the times. The brakes feel nice and touchy. But again, the steering has a great weight to it. Really lets you know what the wheels are doing. We'll turn this camera mirror on, because I know for the purpose of this review, you, you guys will probably think it's pretty cool because of the angle of my POV camera. You're not gonna really see what's behind me, but we can take a step out to this multiple lane highway as soon as we get the chance. Step on the gas about halfway, right here, about halfway. Ooh, wow. Even with half throttle, we're going, that was like less than half throttle. So I noticed the same thing with the Grand Cherokee L with a 3.6 liter V6 and the 4x4, very sensitive throttle tuning. You go to just about red line without even really trying. So yes, it makes the vehicle feel a little bit quicker than it is, which is always nice. I'm not gonna complain about the quickness that this vehicle has because it does feel surprisingly quick. It's just, it's tuned a little bit too sensitive. I would like for the half throttle to only put you out to about 4,000 RPM, but in this vehicle, half throttle sends you to just about red line. And speaking of red line, we'll stop in the gas all the way one time. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm liking how it turns red too, right when it's about to shift when you have your foot completely on the accelerator. Uh, but okay, we have a multiple lane highway coming up with a pretty long on-ramp. We'll let this motorcycle take some distance from us. Right here, off the line, onto a highway, and on the gas. Oh, little wheel spin, wow. get to highway speeds pretty quickly not bad at all and on the concrete pavement really quiet in the interior once we get up to highway speeds the steering feels actually a little bit lighter but the road noise basically non-exists and I don't hear a whole lot of wind noise thanks to these dual pane windows either I'm liking it we could try out sport mode see if it kicks us out of overdrive not really Ah, yeah, we do. So 57, we're at about 2,400 RPM, so we lose our overdrive gears. And the paddle shifters, they're responsive. The torque, it feels decently torquey. That's not what this SUV is about. It's not going to blow you away when it comes to performance. And in, in sport mode, the steering does tighten up. Noticeably, the steering tightens up. The brakes feel nice and touchy, too. The brakes actually feel touchier in sport mode. I'm not quite sure if they adjust the brake tuning 
electronically too. But it's impressing me so far. The performance is there. I just wish that it wasn't so ridiculously sensitive for the tuning. Like full throttle, okay, throw us to 6,300 RPM, throw us to the red line. But half throttle, let's stop around 4,000 RPM. But speaking of half throttle, or we're in manual mode right now, so we can adjust it to our liking. Second gear, the steering feels sharp, and only guess. Not sure what it's yelling at me for, but it does beep. But yeah, second gear pull, the, the engine feels really strong. I'm definitely not complaining with the performance and output of this motor. It feels nice. Luxury and comfort is also excellent. But we'll throw it back into just regular automatic mode, take it out of sport, and let me show you what, what I mean. So right here in sport mode, we'll step on the gas about a third of the way. So third throttle, look at this, third throttle. We're going to over 5,000 RPM. Like I wish I could, I don't know if you guys believe me or not, but you can take my word for it. That was only a third throttle and there's really just no reason to be going over 5,000 RPM. So you kind of have to baby the gas pedal if you want to keep the revs like under 3,000 consistently. But I'm being really nitpicky with my complaints. I guarantee every single owner will get used to it within the first couple days driving this car. Just cruising along right now in comfort mode. Well, not comfort mode, we just don't have sport mode activated. This car feels very luxurious. The steering feels awesome. The throttle response, so about half throttle. Okay. It downshifts you and it gets you going pretty quickly. But again, the revs will be pretty high. And we're just accelerating in traffic, normally babying the gas pedal. The transmission does shift you under 2000 RPM. So it's really not overly sensitive. It's when you're gonna be getting onto highways that the transmission kind of waits to shift you, which now that I think about it, it really isn't that big of a deal. If anything, you'll just get to highway speeds quicker because you're gonna be using more of the engine's power band. But all in all, this is an impressive SUV. Base price at 44,600. You add on a couple of options, such as an upgraded sound system, which sounds really good. Don't get me wrong, excellent sound system. You get a 360 camera, all those nice luxury features, totaling you out to about 48,500 before destination. Like that is a truly excellent value, in my opinion, guys. This You get a lot for this SUV. The performance is solid. The interior is very luxurious. You get stitching for the dashboard, leather stitching for the armrest, upper part of the door panel, soft touch. The seats are heated and ventilated. The mirror is a camera too. So you really are getting all the luxury goodies, heated rear seats. You're definitely getting your money's worth for a vehicle costing around $50,000 after destination and even though i'll definitely recommend this all-new 2022 grand cherokee to anybody who's looking for a family-sized suv that you can take off-road and want the luxury goodies to it i wouldn't necessarily recommend going with a trim over the limited unless you're going for the three-row variant for the two-row variant i think the limited gives you literally everything you could possibly want or need if you want the upgraded luxury and goodies i would recommend either going with a wagoneer that we see right across from us or go for the grand cherokee l because at this price point, under $50,000, this is how I would spec the 2022 updated Grand Cherokee Limited. And a huge thanks to Tampa, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram for making this review possible. Impressive dealership, their inventory is starting to pick back up again. I'll leave a link to it below. And if you're in the Tampa area looking for a new car, truck, or SUV, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. Finally got my hands on the... I've been trying to get my hands on the new Grand Cherokee, updated Grand Cherokee 2 row for quite some time now, so definitely a nice sigh of relief to finally get my hands on one. Uh, but other than that, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You know the channel is just not possible without you guys, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. Let me know what the trim levels are and I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.